What's up, everybody? It's been a little while since we've done an actual profile or anything on any kind of actual decks. Just been opening new packs and random goodies here and there. So, I thought I might change it up a little bit and throw a little, another profile on here for a game I've been playing. Um, I'm into just any kind of card game that exists, as you can tell from the channel so far. But it, I had some decent luck with this. I'm pretty happy with where this deck ended up for this game, and I'm just gonna go into it a little bit. This is the Digit Battle card game. Um, originally, I think it was 99. Uh, there were a couple of sets. The three, um, sorry, I think there were five or six actually, but only the first two had sort of this framing on the cards. After that, they switched to a more, uh, I don't know, a more digital style, which is probably more fitting of the, the theme itself, but by that point I had stopped caring, so like the nostalgia value doesn't mean anything to me at this point, I'm just these that I like, so I only really build from the first two sets of the game, and then any of the promos that came out were all framed the same way, but this is, and it really that's kind of, a lot of people are kind of in that spot too with this game, a lot of the nostalgia value that brings people back to this game is the, the framing, the cards you had as a kid, that kind of thing, because the game itself really isn't phenomenal like it's it's really serviceable um like the rules work quite well it's just very fast and simple but it works great as a side game um not a game i would play as like this is my main card game but as a game to just have a deck built and play here and there uh, it certainly covers covers the bases the way i'd like it to um this deck is built around bioman as the uh, primary evolution you start in the game with a rookie level uh, Digimon, they evolve into champions, ultimates, megas as you go through the game, um, and your goal is to, you know, progressively get them stronger and score points when you destroy your opponent's cards. Uh, in battle, you have a, a color type. These are the color types you compare against your opponent, so if you were fighting a red Digimon, you'd use your red attack. If, you, if this one was fighting a green Digimon, it would use its green attack. You compare those. There are extra cards that you can play to increase and decrease the power of yours or your opponent's cards to go back and forth and, and build it up. Um, crazy thing about this game is you draw 10 cards. Uh, you have a 10 card hand and you always go back to 10. So you really go through your deck quickly. Um, but when you go, when you completely go through your deck, you have to completely wipe your board state too. So you have to kind of balance how quickly you're drawing cards. You know, you might have your best devil, your biggest guy on the board, and then run out of cards in your deck, and all of a sudden he's just gone. So you really have to balance that out. But Beomon um, is is really a great uh, great starter for the deck. There are actually um, three that we use in this one: Beomon, Floramon, and Mushroommon. Uh, I like to keep my Digimon count to, the decks are 30 cards, I like to keep it at no more than 15 Digimon, it's really to open up the opportunity to have the power boost cards in your hand, The those are the cards that really impact the game. If you just throw a monster on the board, hope it wins, and it doesn't and it dies, you have to start over and hope you had your other rookies. But if you have more option cards to help you with buffing your attacks and things like that, you really will see more success, I think. Um, this deck here... Beomon's a pretty reasonable starter. 142, 40, uh, 350. Focus, please. Hmm. Nope. Oh. Well, either way. Uh, the special abilities don't actually do anything other than for card effects. But she's got she's got decent stats down the line, but she goes into a ton of things in the deck. Uh, and the deck, these three together actually work really, really well. They open up a really huge uh, evolution tree amongst themselves, and it really, really helps make sure that you almost always have an option in your hand as far as what you can evolve into, uh, digivolve into, and what options you have to play with. Um, Floramon, she's a vegetation Digimon, which there are cards that come into effect for that as well. Her effects are kind of the opposite direction of Beomon's, she's a different card type though too. Um, she's a... I don't really like to have this as my starting rookie, although it I do have a lot of options to playing this one, but this is always the one, when you start the game you always pick one as your starting card, and this is always the card that we pick for this deck. 
Uh, we also have Mushroom on as well. He's honestly fairly weak as far as uh, rookies are concerned, so having him as the, your guy on the board is not a position you want to be in, but he also has quite a few Digivolves as well, so you can really get you can really get yourself out of some holes with the options that that presents you. Once we get past the rookies, we get into the champions of the deck. Uh, we're going to run six of those. V-Mon, or V-Dramon is... He's my, yeah, this is actually my favorite Digimon. That's the whole reason I built this deck. But um, Biomon and Mushroomon are both targets for this uh, for this card. So that's great. Two of your three starters already give you options to this, uh, this Digimon. His attacks are, you know, starting to get progressively bigger. Um, and Vidramon also opens up quite a few options for going into the deck later. Um, we do run a Birdramon. Uh, Biomon goes into uh, this card. This is just a single um, single evolution card, but Birdramon goes into quite a few of the later cards in the deck, so it's it's a decent add there. Uh, and then Kiwimon, again, is just one that only goes into Floramon, but also opens up a couple of chains as we go along the, the chain. Red Vegemon uh, is Floramon and Mushroommon, so the two of the three starters again. Uh, Togemon, Floramon, Oh, and Bioman. So you got two of the two of the starters again. Great option. And then this one is actually all three of those starters uh, go into this card: Floramon, Bioman, and Mushroommon. Uh, so that's that's awesome. If you open this guy, any of your guys can go off of this level, which is which is just really good for the deck. Um, as we go down the chain, then we go up into the ultimates, and we're gonna run four of those. Uh, Aero Vidramon is just the next level up from Vidramon, and I had to run him as Vidramon's my favorite guy. I had to have this guy in there, but he's great too because Vidramon and Birdramon, so two of your uh, ultimates go right into this guy. Please continue to focus. There we go. Um, his attacks start to get real big. Uh, he has fly, and um, that helps a lot with, uh, with a couple cards in this deck. Uh, Garudamon, this card's awesome. Um, it is a it, DNA Digivolves, so with this guy you you have to have the form plus a Digivice to be able to do the Digivolution. With this guy you just have to have both forms, so you have to have one on the board and one in your hand, then you play that one on the board to Digivolve. So Togemon, Vidramon, Birdramon, Kiwimon, Vidramon, Birdramon. So we run we run Togemon, Vidramon, Birdramon, and Kiwimon. Uh, we run all of those options, so all three of these combos are available combos within this deck. So this guy is super easy to play. He's super good. The 4, 430, 460 is just massive. We do run a Cherrymon as well. Uh, Woodmon and Red Vegemon. Two of your uh, five champions go into this level. It's good. And then uh, Daramon. Last one, Vidramon and Woodrum, Woodmon, and then Birdramon and Red Vegemon. We run all four of those cards, so this card is also very easy to get on the board. Um, again, 470, 430. This guy's real, real good beater as well. Uh, and nice thing that we have going on with this deck, we have two ultimates that need Digivices. Uh, one red, one yellow. So keeping the Digivice count uh, you know, narrow is nice too. It means we don't have to run a ton of them. We don't need a lot of variation in what we have as far as our Digivices later. So that's going to be great. And last Digimon on the deck, we run one Mega for him. Um, this guy here, he is fantastic. 530, 530, 350. Even 350 is a decent score. Um, but Aerovidramon goes into him. Garudamon goes into him. And Daramon goes into him. All three of those are cards we run in the deck. They require a Digivice and it's red, so it's the same color as Aerovidramon. We don't have to, again, we don't have to run a green Digivice for any reason or anything like that. This one has a special ability. You score 300 points when Digivolving to it. Um, like I said, the score is, or the, the goal of the game is to get to 1,000 points, so you get 300 automatically if you get to this level. Sometimes that's enough to win the game on the spot. Um, yeah, I, he's... I like this card a lot. It works really well in this deck. The, the Digimon chain in this deck really um, really builds itself well. Everything goes into everything that it should. Everything functions the way that it should. And all of the, the rookies all go into everything. It 
it's just really cohesive. The, the chain for this is really well built. Uh, there's some decks, you know, like, obviously everyone likes Agumon and Greymon and things like that. That's the main character's thing. But Greymon only digivolves from Agumon. So you, you're just stuck there. And Agumon himself doesn't go into many guys either. So it's, unfortunately, he's not really that good of a, a starter, despite being the main character's Digimon. Um, where Beomon, on the other hand, goes into, like, everything. And Gomamon is another one that goes into a ton of things. Tentomon is a great starter. But Beomon really helps... Uh, she just works so well with this this trio of starters. Everything is so so uniform, so easy to get to. There's never a situation where I'm like, man, I just don't have anything I can play because pretty much any of these cards can go into any of these cards, and that's that's a great feeling. Um, you get into games against people where they're like, well, I just don't have any extra cards, so I have to kill my guy and start over for the new one. And then I don't have anything to digivolve onto him because everything digivolves onto one specific card or something like that. So these, this is really a good, good line to Digimon. Very happy with it. Very happy with where it turned out. As we keep going, we'll get into the extra cards in the deck. Um, this is a good, you know, half chunk of the deck. And again, this I think it's really important to have a huge sort of plethora of these. When I was young, you know, I built decks with a ton of Digimon because those are the cool cards but really the if you can keep it between like 12 and 15 or so Digimon I think that's really the right spot to be but as we get into this we run one Ultra Digivolve um, as you've noticed everything's a one of in this deck uh, in this card game everything has to be played as a one of you can't have multiple copies of cards so that is that's one of the things that makes the game so bizarre, um, but it makes it so important to have such a cohesive deck is because I can't have multiple copies of Biomon, um, or I can't have multiple copies of Bergemon, or what, you know, what have you. I have to have, I can only have one of each of those, so I have to build things that have multiple options and places they can end up. Because you don't, you can't rely on one card coming to the top or seeing it multiple times because you very well may not. Uh, Ultra Digivolve, though, lets you just take any Digimon and Digivolve it to the next level, regardless of its requirements. So even if for some reason I don't have a card that Beomon can Digivolve into, if I had to, I could play this to turn her into something that only, you know, Woodmon or Floramon could, could turn into. Or sorry, Mushroommon or Floramon could turn into. So that's good. The downside to this is you do have to discard your entire hand. So that puts you really close to you know, decking yourself out, because then you have to draw 10 more cards, which means you'll probably lose whatever you put on the board. So it's not great to use this just willy-nilly, but, you know, if you need to get to, uh, if you need to get to something, if you're just going to get creamed in a battle and you need to get to something, this, this will help you out of that, out of that bind. It'll help you get, you know, make sure you can keep a card on the board that you can then devolve into again later. It's, Sometimes it's great to use just to go into the Mega or something like that to try to score that 300 to win the game. We also run three Digivices, one red, one red-yellow, one yellow. Um, these, you know, we have we have two Digimon that require a red Digivice, and the Mega requires a yellow. Um, so, or, I'm sorry, two of the, the Mega and one of the Champions requires a red, and one requires a yellow. So we've got two red options, two yellow options in the deck. That's enough to get us to the card that we need. Um, we, there is a red-green Digivice as well, um, and there's a green-yellow Digivice. I could have ran those, but I don't. I don't need the. I don't need to see them that often. I, I literally need to evolve one time a game, typically, and this this gets me to where I need to be most of the time. Uh, we read, we run one of each of the offensive cards. Really, I think every deck should have one of each of these. It just changes your type to red, your type to yellow, or your type to green. This, you know, if you go into battle and you're it's like, oh man, my opponent's going to crush me with its green attack. Well, now I'm red, and I go, I'm going to beat its red attack, or its yellow, or its green, whatever. These are, I think, I, they're just staple cards. I think every deck should run one of each of these. Most of the time, I think, really, this stack of cards here, 
I think every deck's going to run an Ultra Digivolve, assuming it's Digivolving. Um, you'll probably run three Digivices, one of each in the in the single colors that you're playing, and then one in the in the double color. If you're getting into three color Digivolutions, then you'll you may run a fourth one. But I think every deck is going to have sort of the seven cards in it, as a, at least as a starting uh, Digivolve Force Effects option within the deck. I don't think there's any reason not to run any of those cards. I'm um, getting into the Power Blast cards, which again, just play in as, you know, things to help you buff attacks after you've figured out what your attack would be, or to, um, there's some counters and things in here. This card's awesome when you fight an opponent that has Fly. Um, you know, when, when they set down a card that has Fly, you just automatically score 200 points. So, that's... <laughs> This with the Mega is half of your score by itself. You can't use this with the Rookie that they play for obvious reasons. You can't just be like, oh, turn one, 300 points. It's not a not a fair thing, but it is it is nice later. Uh, Power Freeze, this is a phenomenal card. I don't think there's many people who will not run this either. Um, you can void an opponent's Digivolve or Force Effects card, so they set down a Digivice to Digivolve into whatever form they need to, and you're just like, nope, that card doesn't work, you can't Digivolve. That's huge turn of the tide. Power Blast, uh, if you lose, your opponent mills three, uh, sends the top three offline, which means send them into the discard pile. This is awesome, because uh, like I said earlier, if you run out of cards in your deck, then you have to lose everything on your board the whole guy on you know your whole stack is just gone so if your opponent's just beating you into the ground with with the same attacker at least if you lose you get them closer to decking themselves out bomb dive is great uh if you fight a green or yellow type you add 100 points to your power which makes some of these types already higher and then to use this you have to have the ability fly almost every card in this deck has fly so this is a really good card for this deck Another card that I think most decks will run, if you're fighting a Digimon of a higher level, uh, double your power. The number of times that this card just comes in clutch is is huge, and really can help you come back from a, a losing end of the game. Digiduel, if you win, double your score. To use this card, you have to mill three of your own cards. Sometimes this is just a great way to get yourself, you know, one point or you know, one tick closer to winning the game. Um, Especially if you know that you're about to deck yourself out and you're going to lose your guy anyway. Sometimes it's worth playing this to get a couple extra score to start over to get yourself a little bit more of a head start, assuming you have to start your chain over. Downgrade. Downgrade either your champion or your opponent's champion back to a rookie. Um, so obviously this only works on, you know, one level of the chain, but if you get, you know, if you get your champion up to an ultra or ultimate your opponent digivolves to a champion and you can play this to put him back to a rookie you're just gonna you're just gonna dominate from that point flood um you win an opponent's digimon with dig has a power you just add 50 to your power there are a lot of decks with dig um and a lot of people that i play with use digimon with dig a lot of tentomon uh builds and things have dig for the insect types so um this comes up a lot, and it just helps you just, you know, squeak over their power. It's a nice thing. And then this card's nice. It's just a free 50 points to your Digimon power. Um, if you have put this card on top of Crest Tag and you Digivolved, you can get an additional 50 points. I don't run Crest Tag in this deck. Uh, just just the single Crest. It, Like I said, it's just a free 50 points on any Digimon in any fight. Just a nice one of, or, you know, 30th card to round the deck out. But from there, that's I mean that's that's the whole build. Um, I'm really happy with with where the deck goes. You get to you really get to move through the the digivolution chain quite easily in this deck. As I spent multiple minutes explaining earlier, it you're really never hung up on. I I don't have an option to play this turn, which means that you get to keep getting guys on the board. You keep getting getting to go up the chain. You don't have to continue to draw cards you don't have to continue to you know deck yourself out because you don't you don't need to when you get to keep a guy on the board you don't have to worry about digging for more um more pieces you just have 
the outs when you, when you need it. You're certain with 10 cards in your opening hand and then drawing back to 10 every turn, you really can see most of the chain quite quickly and most of the chain can go into any of the other parts. So you're never, never out of options playing against other opponents. They're, you know, where they're, where they're digging through the deck and constantly drawing to find something to replace the cards that you're defeating by keeping the same stack on the board. Uh, they, they tend to mill their deck quite quickly. They tend to lose whatever's on the board when that happens. And in your deck, you you draw so few times that you you don't have to... I mean, I was able to keep my Mega on the board uh, for two turns, and that's, you know, four or five turns into the game. And before, I, before it decked itself out with just the number of cards I had to do to do so. And... Even then, once I lost the Mega, I was able to just go back into Floramon immediately into a uh, Palmon, or into a Kiwimon, and that was enough to, to end the game, because we were already at 800 points by the time the Mega had been on the board and won the battle. So it, it really works quite well. You have an option for any time you need. If you're not going to win a fight, you just drop one of the red, you know, the offensive cards to switch yourself to where you need it to be. If you are going to win the fight, you just let yourself win and move past it. And, yeah, that's, I mean, it's, I'm very, very happy with how this deck turned out. I think it's a very strong contender for um, one of the best decks I've seen for the game so far. Um, not that there's a ton of people playing or a ton of decks that I've gotten to play against, but very few that I've built myself or seen built work this well together. Uh, I'll probably put another couple decks for this game up. I'm going to try to do some more profiles for other games, too. Um, we've been working on the Gundam MS War card game a lot, again. Uh, sort of a 3.0 version of that. And I'm going to go over what the official starter decks are for that game. Uh, we're working hard on making that determination, too. So we'll have some more content coming. I've got a couple more unboxings that I've got to upload still, so... Some more videos will be coming in the near future. Some stuff in the pipeline. But take it easy. Everyone, thanks for sticking around and checking the content out. Hope if anyone's uh, played the Digimon card game or is interested in it, uh, that this is a informative video and interesting deck. I'm quite happy with it. Beomon's a cool character, and, and I get to run all my sweet Vidramon stuff. So, bonus win for me. Adios.